Dan Baker. I'm the global head of supply chain at Smile Direct Club. I'm in charge of all the manufacturing operations here for our teeth aligner and retainer business. Yes, so here at Smile Direct Club, we've got 60 industrial scale 3D printers. Uh, and we've actually invested significantly in our 3D print capacity over the last few months as we got ready for the significant growth that we were seeing in our normal everyday business. Um, so at this stage, we're able to not just supply our everyday business and our customers who are currently going through treatment plans, but we're also able to repurpose a large percentage of that fleet to make these great products for the COVID crisis. We're actively working on a number of projects and the top two are the production of a face shield and the second one is a face mask. And we're almost ready to go with the face mask, but we're ready to go with a face shield today. So the 3D printed parts that we make for the face shield, I've actually got a sample here. It's the simple head part that would fit on the head of the medical professional. And you simply take that and attach a Perspex screen. And with a little bit of magic and some rubber bands, lo and behold, you have the finished article, which is a ready to go face shield, which offers some pretty simple but effective protection for the medical professional. You know, we saw the need for the uh, response that Smile Direct Club are, are providing here a few weeks ago as the COVID crisis and pandemic uh, started to spread across the world. And so we quickly went online and see what options there were and what files there were to, to create the, uh, the necessary parts for the face shield and then started to produce them and do some experiments to see how quickly we could go. Um, and we're now in a place where we're ready to probably start to make and assemble these as late as, uh, as this week and as early as next week. Uh, and we can make probably around 7,500 of these face shields per day. The second product we're making is the face mask and it still requires some significant development and collaboration with medical professionals to get to the stage where it's ready to go. But we're hopeful that's only days away. Yeah, so this is the, uh, the face mask that we're currently pulling together. And it's made up of three simple pieces that literally snap together like Lego, and they're all 3D printed. And then in the middle, you have the, uh, the filtration device, which then acts as the face mask or the respirator. It then simply fits to the face, a bit like the face shield, but it gives significantly better protection and efficacy against airborne particles like so. And so we're working with the medical professionals to not just prove its efficacy, but also to make sure that after use, it can be sterilized so that the next shift or the next day that the medical professional comes in, they can clean it down and use it again, rather than have to go through the, the very expensive process, which is currently happening, where a lot of these masks are just being used once and then thrown away. Hence the crisis. We can't keep up with the production of the disposable masks, but what we can do is have reusable masks. And that is going to be the need over the next two months, right? Millions of these face shields and millions of face masks. Um, and while the majority of those will probably be supplied by the companies that are already making existing masks, I think the call to action from 3D print companies and other manufacturers is how can you repurpose your assets quickly to contribute and make a meaningful difference? And that's what Smile Direct Club is looking to do and repurpose its assets of 60 3D printers to make these novel products. Yeah, the swabs uh, for test kits is another project that we're actively working on. And the swab is literally the little piece of, uh, of plastic that goes up the patient's nose, scrapes some of the mucus, and then goes in a vial for testing. And believe it or not, there's a desperate shortfall of swabs to the tune of maybe somewhere around half a billion. And so one of the projects we've been working on over the weekend is to make some of these swabs We've sent them off to uh, Harvard for um, selection. Uh, and we got word last night actually that our design and our fabrication of these has been selected to go forward to the next stage. And so we're working very closely with Harvard and our partners at HP in Barcelona and in San Diego to now move to the next stage and make these on a more industrial scale. Again, each printer every day can make probably 10,000 of these swabs. So, you know, with our fleet of 60 printers, we can make a massive dent into the shortfall of swabs as well. You know, I applaud the efforts of the entrepreneurs and the pioneers that are doing it in their garage and if they've got smaller 3D printing businesses, but the reality is they can probably only make maybe 10 or 100 a day. 
the benefit that Smile Direct Club has as one of the world's largest 3D print facilities here in Tennessee is that with 60 printers, I can make 7,000 of these a day. Uh, and so within a month, I can make a really big impact to the shortfall and really help the crisis. At the end of the day, we're all in it together. We've just got bigger scale and can, so make, we can make a bigger benefit quicker. Um, we're not going to lose sight of our everyday business and we're certainly not going after um, you know, our pursuit of helping the medical uh, industry uh, and putting our customer and everyday business on the shelf. We're trying to do both and get the balance right. So we've got a, um, an email set up for any contacts that people would like to reach out to Smile Direct Club. It's resilience at smiledirectclub.com. So if you send an email there um, with your uh, questions or you're interested in how Smile Direct Club can help you, then I encourage you to do so and we'll be in contact very quickly.